Um, Wanda puts her kids to bed, which gave me very Titanic vibes, where she's like, I Mommy's know. very proud. Just don't look out the window behind you while you go night night. <laughs> don't look at the rising water, just fall asleep. <laughs> God. Oh my gosh, now I'm remembering those old people don't, from Titanic. Don't think about Why it. Why did you don't bring up Titanic? It. I couldn't help it. I'm so upset now. <laughs> Welcome to the Art of Costume Blogcast. I'm Elizabeth Joy Glass. And I'm Spencer Williams. How you doing, Spencer? I'm good. How was your food? It was really good. It was good. It was worth the journey to go get it. I absolutely love sitting here and watching you eat your queso. It, just, it looks so good. It's delicious. <laughs> if you ever come, we'll go to Red Sombrero. It's way better than Chipotle. <laughs> And you might just run into a mini coop convention, which I think I did. Oh. <laughs> it, okay, Spencer, this is the weirdest thing. So it's it's like a freestanding building and like, you know, like a strip mall type deal. And I pull up and like the parking lot's like weirdly empty, except for like two rows. And there's like all these people congregating and talking to each other. And I'm like are they protesting something? Like, is there like something going on? Like I didn't understand. And then I come out with my food. They're all mini Cooper. <laughs> wow. I was just like, um, I know some people are car people. I'm not a car person. And sounds like meeting up on a Saturday to look at mini Coopers. Sounds like a tremendous waste of time to me, but to <laughs> each their own, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I love Mini Coopers. I think they're adorable. I mean, after the pandemic, we all have like our own fun, different interests, you know? I like to DJ now. You and I both garden. Some people fell in love with Mini Coopers. And so, you know, everyone's enjoying their new hobbies now that they found their freedom again. I mean, that's that's great for everybody. I was I was so confused. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of fun things that happened during quarantine, what are we watching today? We are watching the show that launched the Marvel TV series universe. We're watching WandaVision. Uh, finally, I'm so excited to talk about this. I've been basically talking about it to everyone who will listen in the streets, at gas stations, public restrooms. I'm so glad that I finally am a part of this podcast so I could talk about it. I know. <laughs> I know. And I was like, okay, like, WandaVision was the first one. And then, like, we've gone through, like, uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We've gone through Loki now. And I was like, okay, let's go back. Let's watch WandaVision. And I was like, I don't know if the other ones even hold a candle to this. Like... It's so good. Yeah, I love Falcon and Winter Soldier. I love Loki, but WandaVision is just, it's special. It's something. And it got a ton it, of it Emmy is. nominations, and it deserves every yes! single one. So, Spencer, what Emmy nomination did it get? Uh, what special Emmy nomination? Costume designer Maya C. Rubio was nominated for an Emmy for WandaVision. And I just have to say, I would not be surprised if she won, because these costumes are just... Chef's kiss. I can't uh, actually do the stellar. noise. <laughs> there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, God. Are you okay? Yeah. I just, I can't do an actual chef's kiss, so I just say the word chef's kiss. Just got to pucker your lips. No one wants to hear that. <laughs> well... All right, so let's go behind the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start us off with a summary and then bring us behind the wardrobe with some of your amazing facts. Yes, yes. So for this week's summary, it kind of did a little bit out of order, trying to put into perspective for those of you who did not take the time to watch a show and understand the mysteries. So here we go. After the events of Avengers Endgame, Waxa... <laughs> Waxa... <laughs> Waxa Mackamoth. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start that over. <laughs> Good job. Ooh, it's hot in here now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
After the events of Avengers Endgame, Wanda Maximoff is struck with grief. After being denied the chance to bury her beloved Vision, Wanda visits a plot of land bought for Wanda by Vision before his death. In a remarkable moment of power, Wanda captures the town of Westview, creating a bubble-like safe space for herself as she lives out her ideal world through the lens of popular television shows, ranging from the 50s to the 2000s. Unfortunately, things appear too good to be true as the cracks of reality begin to come through, forcing Wanda to face her traumas and skeletons head-on, becoming who she really truly is, the Scarlet Witch. Fantastic summary once again, Spencer. Thank you. I'm glad it was in your own words. (laughs) I did Uh, not steal that one this time. (laughs) For anyone who has not already seen WandaVision, consider this your spoiler warning. It's been like, it's been too long. You should have seen it. Go watch it. Come back. Be amazed by the costumes. I know some people don't get into Marvel as much as like maybe Elizabeth and I, but this is definitely a show you should check out for the costumes, the story, the acting, the sets. Everything about it is just stunning. It it really is. But so let's go behind the wardrobe and find out a little bit more about that stunning wardrobe. Uh, so the creator of WandaVision is Jay Schaefer. Costume design is by Maya's Rubio. Uh, her notable work is Apocalypto, Avatar, Thor Ragnarok, and Jojo Rabbit. Uh, she's currently working on Thor, Love and Thunder. Oh, I can't fucking wait. I'm so excited for that. Natalie Portman's coming back. Oh, it's going to be I'm so stoked. good. And don't even get me started about Avatar and Thor Ragnarok. Those are two of, like, my movies. Yeah, especially Avatar. (laughs) I will not tolerate any Avatar slander on this podcast. I'm just setting that down right now. I'm just annoyed that I'm not allowed to have my own opinions about it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) So Maya's Rubio, wonderful costume designer. It sounds like she really had a good time. Uh, with this and she put really a lot of like thought into it she didn't see this as just like any other comic book movie and she didn't really see it as like kind of silly as a lot of people do see comic book movies she said in an interview with awards daily this is a show about grief and how love transcends into our grief and how the mind creates worlds to get through it i find it very profound it may sound like the MCU can be superficial, but it didn't. But I didn't find it that way at all. WandaVision is very philosophical, and it is. It's wow, that is a beautiful quote. It is. She like she goes through a lot. She learns how to cope with her grief and comes out the other side. If not a better person, a more powerful person. (laughs) Yeah, and it's so true about, like, how we create these worlds almost, like, to help us process grief and our own traumas and things that we go through in life, depression. I know I feel like I do that with creating and sketching and even watching movies and doing podcasts. It's like inserting, creating my own world to help me process the things I go through. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so she was really excited about that aspect of the show, but also working with, you know, the MCU and getting to be in that universe. Uh, she said, like, you know, there were some restrictions. You kind of have to fit your design, like, into, like, the MCU color palette. Like, kind of, the MCU has a kind of predetermined look. But she said, like, what her job was, was to improve on that and still make it unique within their little piece of this universe. So she found that very challenging, very exciting. And on top of that, she was excited to get to do all these different decades of costumes. So we go from, like, the 1950s through the 2000s. So she said about 80% had to be built. Because she said, like, you know, for the 50s, 60s, like, yeah, I could have gone to, like, a costume house and, like, gotten something. But those eras really depend on fit and making sure it fits the person correctly was super important. And it is something I've noticed in, like, a lot of period films. If they land between, like, 1940 and, like, 1970, 
sometimes the costumes can I feel like can look a little bit off because they are just like getting things that already exist and putting them on a person. And it's like we like aren't quite built the same way anymore. Like our diets have changed dramatically. Our level of fitness, our beauty standards have all changed dramatically. So you have to take that look and make it fit a modern person. And I feel like she did that beautifully. Oh, definitely. She, I know she's talked about too how Elizabeth Olsen especially has such a timeless face. And it's very true. It's almost like she was able to fit any era that we put Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda into. It's just, ugh, it was just so good. Yeah. So she really loved that challenge. She also really loved the sitcom angle of it uh, because she grew up in Mexico where she was born. And she said, like, all of these old, you know, sitcoms were being televised when she was a child. So she was very familiar with, like, the Dick Van Dyke show, I Love Lucy. So she was excited to, like, bring her nostalgia for those TV shows into this and kind of get to put her own spin on recreating them a little bit. Uh, One of the ways she, like, made those decades kind of her own was through fabric. She's very interested in textiles, and she actually had a textile expert... They helped inspire her and helped her create, like, these new versions of old designs. And that's, that's, our, that's our costume behind the wardrobe facts. I am, like, so excited now to talk about all these different episodes. I just, uh, there's so many good ones. I just can't wait to break them down with you. Yeah, and we're going to do things a little bit differently this week. Um, we're going to do a little summary of each episode and then talk about the costumes. So... Stick with us. We'll be right back after this short little break. Can't wait. Hello, we are back from break. <laughs> we had an interesting chat during break. <laughs> so let's get started with WandaVision. Uh, we're going to talk about episodes one through three in this first segment. And let's start with filmed before a live studio audience. Yes. The first episode. Very heavily influenced by the Dick Van Dyke show and I Love Lucy. Mm-hmm. Um, in this first episode, Wanda and Vision, they're a newlywed couple. This episode is entirely in black and white. And they're rather confused when they realize there's a heart drawn on the calendar on this date. Neither of them knows what this means, which I know very well when I look at my Google calendar and I just see some random note. Don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. Um, And the whole episode is about Vision and Wanda trying to figure out what the special day is. Turns out they have a dinner party they're supposed to host for Vision's new boss. Um, Throughout the way, Wanda's trying to learn how to throw a dinner party At the same time, Wanda's having help from everyone's favorite nosy neighbor, Agnes. Um, I love this episode. I thought it was such a fun intro to WandaVision. It really was. And you can see, like, the Dick Van Dyke show inspiration. The way it looks, the the script, like, it's so 1950s sitcom. (laughs) Uh, It's, like, it's so on the nose. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like really confused. I was like, what is happening here? It feels so much like like these 1950s sitcoms that we know so well. Um, the episode starts actually with uh, Wanda in this wedding dress, which is actually very... Beautiful wedding dress. Very beautiful. And it's very heavily inspired by Audrey Hepburn's wedding dress and Funny Face. Oh, do you want to hear just how inspired it is by Audrey Hepburn's Funny Face wedding dress? Please tell me. So, in an interview with Variety, she said, We got exactly the same fabric from the factory in France. We went all the way. (laughs) It was supposed to look like a bonbon, like a beautiful object of delicacy. They went to France to get the same fabric. (laughs) (laughs) What, like 70 years later? That's perfect. They're 
you know, like once once you know you want something, you don't want anything else. You just gotta make it happen. I want that fabric, and that's the only fabric I'm gonna accept. Yeah, like I understand that feeling, and that's just like one example of what she was saying. Like textiles are very important, and the name of the textile expert uh, was Susan Anderson. She helped her with the textiles for this, and it comes through. Oh yeah. I mean, the fabrics and textiles in the show are stunning, and we're going to bring that up probably constantly throughout this episode. Um, Another thing that I think is so cool about these black and white episodes is that they're black and white, and they were filmed in black and white. To do that, Maya's Rubio actually had to do a lot of research with her iPhone, which I talked about a lot when we were researching Mink a couple of months ago Mm -hmm. for the Oscars. I used a monochromatic filter on your iPhone to see how garments look in a black and white filter. I'm obsessed with that idea. I know. I'm like, that's brilliant. Because it's like, nobody does that anymore. Like, we get, like, what, one black and white movie every five to ten years? <laughs> like yeah. Almost never. Almost never. I mean, maybe sometimes someone will use it, like, real quick for a little, like, fun effect. But that's about it. But the dress is beautiful. It all looks fantastic. And this is one of the things you can tell, like, they diverge from, like, oh, making it look exactly like a 1950s sitcom. It's, like, because you can tell, like, every, like, little detail of what she's wearing. Um, Especially when you get to the kitchen scene and she's talking about her apron. (laughs) (laughs) With the floral pattern and then the even smaller little, like, sheer apron on top of it. Uh, it's so beautiful. I love how it's almost like it's the 1950s, but this is Wanda's impersonation of the 50s. Like, this is how yes. she would do the 50s because she's like creating her own kind of TV show. It's like she's the costume designer at the same time, which I think is really cool. Um, I love that taffeta dress that Wanda is wearing in the kitchen. Oh, um, that's well, beautiful. Throughout the whole dinner scene. It's so good. Mm hmm. After she she changes from the chiffon nightgown. Oh, that nightgown is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Kind of want the robe, not gonna lie. With those, like, feathered sleeves. I want it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I was like, I'm here for this. She should keep it on. Like, who cares? Uh, I was so excited to see Deborah Jo Rupp play Mrs. Hart in this, because we yes. all know her from that 70s show, and it just felt like a perfect nod to, like, sitcoms by having her in this episode. It really was, and I was like, the mom from that 70s show? What are you doing here? You don't belong here. <laughs> it almost added to the mystery. Like, you just know that this is one big weird sitcom, and seeing her in it such, like, a notable character in sitcom history it was like what are you trying to do here marvel what what is right? what is your deal <laughs> and like her costume i feel like what was one of those examples of like you could because of like all that work she did with like her iphone making sure like you could see things because like her dress and like shrug is like covered in like little embellishments or um embroidery And it just, like, pops so much. Yeah. And speaking of popping, you're going to notice, too, my favorite character is Agnes, the nosy neighbor. And... She stands out. She stands out. She's a huge contrast because she wears a lot of darker colors, which kind of makes her feel ominous. If you've seen the show all the way through, you know why Mm -hmm. she sticks out like a sore thumb. And going back to the beginning, that first scene where she, like remembers the pineapple for Wanda's pineapple upside down cake. She shows up in this black, like plaid outfit with a little sweater yes. over her shoulders. Looks like a black cape. She sticks out so much. And like thinking like back a to sore thumb. Yeah, thinking back to like my first watch through, you don't really notice it. But now that we've seen it, you're like, Mm-mm. oh my gosh, she's like so obviously not supposed to be here. It works perfectly. It does. It does. Uh, Vision, played by the amazing Paul Bettany. I like him. Um, <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> oh my gosh, I recently saw a movie he did in like the 2000s. Go watch Wimbledon. I will, just for you. 
<laughs> okay, you have a type. It's Paul Bettany, Benedict Cumberbatch, and um, Sebastian Stan. I think you have a type, and it's a Marvel leading actor who's very tall and slender. I mean, I'll take Thor. <laughs> Just any Marvel hero. Anyways, go on. (laughs) Anyway, he looks very dapper in this. Um, I love the little, like, design on his tie. Because it does look, it does make him look, like, very, like, more mechanic in his, like, in his human form. Like, he has little buttons on his tie. Oh, I love that, too. Also, looking at his tie... We'll get to it later, but remember in a Halloween episode where someone says, who are you supposed to be a traffic light? Looking at the buttons on his (laughs) tie, it literally looks like a traffic light. It does look like a traffic light. And it's just perfect because his coworkers keep calling him, like he's like a computer. Yeah. Or he's like a machine. And he's like, I'm a, I'm a human man made of flesh. I was like, wow, way to, way to throw him off your scent. (laughs) Uh, Why don't you walk us through the next episode? So we take a little, a little travel through time to the next decade. So we're in the 60s now. The episode starts out amazing because of Wanda and Vision. It's at night. They're sleeping. But it's the, it's the parents' bedroom of every sitcom in the 1960s. Two twin beds <laughs> and like six feet in between them. <laughs> uh, they're frightened by a knocking at the window. So Wanda like brings the beds together. Turns out just to be a branch, but Vision's like, ooh, this is a much better arrangement, the two beds together. (laughs) The next morning, they're practicing for the talent show fundraiser in the town. They're doing a practical magic act with fake magic tricks. So they're getting ready for that. Vision's kind of like, but we can do, like, real magic, kind of. He's like, no, we need to make it look, you know, like real, like we're just normal people. He's like, okay, enough practice for today. I'm going to go to the community, to the neighborhood watch meeting. And she's like, okay, well, I have a town meeting to go to. She goes to her town meeting, meets Geraldine, her new BFF. She also meets the town mean girl, Dottie. Mm. And things are going well. Things are going great. But then her and Dottie are alone, and Dottie's like, I don't like you. And something very strange happens. Neither of them quite know what it is, but they just kind of go on with their days. Meanwhile, at the town watch meeting, Vision decided to, you know, eat some gum and accidentally swallow it. Messes him up, makes him act drunk. So when he gets to the talent show, Wanda looks amazing, but he's acting like a drunk fool. (laughs) But they... They get through their ta- their magic show, they win the comedy prize, and the whole town loves them. So they're going, they're back home about their day, and all of a sudden, Wanda's pregnant! <laughs> Everything turns to color, and we're into the next episode. Uh, I loved the talent show scenes in this episode. That was some amazing costuming. That was so good. Her little, like, assistant girl outfit. I was like, yes. It's get so it. beautiful. I love the triangular shapes in the bodysuit. It's very feminine. Um, mm-hmm. With the top hat, it just works so perfectly. It does. It does. Um, I have to talk about Dottie, played by the brilliant Emma Caulfield Ford. Who plays Anya and Buffy the Vampire Slayer? I love her so much. When I saw her in this, she looks so good. Hasn't aged a day. She just looks as beautiful as ever. I was just so happy to see her in this. And she plays such a great character because it's another example of like that sitcom. Because it's like she's she's like the mean girl in the neighborhood, but it's like such a heightened like meanness like she doesn't even try to hide the fact that like she's queen b and everybody needs to shut up and do what she says yeah she's like very campy mean which it probably goes to the television sitcom aesthetic of it um hair and makeup did so good on her i love her blonde hair it just works so good i know and she has like the perfect 1960s like housewife look 
of like the fitted like sleeveless dress in like the ambiguous kind of pattern i loved it Uh, we have to talk about the influences of this episode um this of course was a 60s sitcom inspired is very heavily inspired by bewitched which is a brilliant show um, it even included an animated opening sequence at the top that was very Hanna Barbera style, which I thought was so lovely. That's another great part of these shows. It watch them for no other reason than to see the opening sequences yeah. of each episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so perfect. Like it just works. I love it so much. And it just brings you right into it. And I just love that Wanda is just manifesting these different ideas of opening sequences. I know. It it's so great. As much as they're trying to fit in, like, Wanda and Vision, they clearly stand out. And I love how, like, she very subtly, like, stands out in the meeting because, like, everyone there is wearing a dress, wearing a skirt. She's got some amazing, like, pedal pusher pants on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she, she, like, feels very underdressed, but it's like, no, you look good. And she's, like, very clearly wearing, like, a red sweater. Even though it's black and white, you just know that she's always staying true, like, to her Wanda red color schemes, which is just amazing. Um, Geraldine's a, a fashion star in this, too. I love her outfits in episodes two and three. I forgot that she was introduced in this episode, and I was like, whoa, that's right. And she looks just, like, so adorable. I can't tell, like, what the pattern is on her dress, but it works. She's got, I love her earrings, the, like, the pearl drop with, like, the the ball of pearls at the end of it. Oh, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> I love them, too. Um, also, we have to talk about Vision's magician costume. I, I'm obsessed with it because everything gives off very, like, very Halloween costume almost. Like, this is something you would find at, like, the Spirit Halloween store. Like, if you found a generic magician's costume. But it just works. It works so well. It's very funny. It, It really does. And, like, the way he's just, like mildly disheveled the whole time (laughs) like during the actual act it's like not too much but enough that everybody knows like something's up yeah i i didn't even think about till my i just rewatched it again vision doesn't eat food so that's kind of the whole point like he's chewing he swallowed that gum and now he's all messed up yeah (laughs) he can't have that and I love the animations of, like, the gum circling through him. That's such a good note. Yeah. Gumming up his gears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, such a brilliant episode. Such a brilliant episode. And, like, can we just, for a hot second, talk about that beekeeper at the end? Ooh, so creepy. I I didn't know a beekeeper outfit could be scary. Yeah, the thing about the show that I love is that it's almost built like a horror story, but they set it to these very cheerful vibes of like happy, positive music, very sitcom like music, but like very scary things happen throughout the show, which makes it even scarier yeah. when it's playing to like the cheerful WandaVision soundtrack. Um, that beekeeper was scary. I was like, ah. but then it, it just goes back to. Wanda's pregnant. (laughs) So Wanda is now (laughs) pregnant, which brings us into the third episode, Now in Color. Um, This episode is very heavily inspired by the 70s, uh, especially the Brady Bunch and Good Times. And in this episode, Wanda, like we said, is pregnant, and she's just progressively more pregnant basically every time the camera switches to her. (laughs) She is just growing two twins at one point, I think Vision says at this point they're going to be born by dinner time. And, I mean, that's basically true. I don't think we made it that far. She is just pregnant in a day. This was such a fun episode. I especially love the opening sequence to this one. When it's just all these very cheesy 70s, like, setups of them, like, eating ice cream. Or just a really scary shot of, like, Wanda and Vision on a swing set. I don't know why, but it just bothers me. It's so creepy in such, like, a brilliant way. But also, this is the first episode that's fully in color, which was a lot of fun. No, that that was great. And it's like, they take advantage of the color. 
like she said, it's all about grief. And color was one of the things she used to show that. So, like, while it is all colorful now, it's still, it's all there. It's all kind of, like, slightly muted. Nothing, like, super, like, vibrant. You don't, you never see anything vibrant in this episode. Yeah. Uh, One of my favorite costumes is, of course, the maternity dress that Wanda wears throughout this episode. Oh my gosh. I actually did a project with Maya's Rubio a couple months ago, and when we were interviewing her, she talked about how she used vintage fabric, but because Wanda is growing twins inside of her, she's growing very quickly, so they're using a vintage fabric, so they couldn't really just make tons of these looks with this vintage fabric. So they actually had to replicate it. Um, They had to replicate this vintage fabric to make multiples of this maternity dress. That's so cool. So that's a fabric that Susan Anderson found for her. And she said, like, as soon as she saw it, she was like, oh, that's the one. And she was like, you know, you really don't see a lot of, like, pregnancy designs in, like, film or television, like... Yeah, there are pregnant characters, but, like, they're usually not the main focus ever. Mm-hmm. So she was, like, clearly, like, w- throughout the episode, Wanda's trying to, like, hide the pregnancy, keep it discreet. And she was, like, you know, Empire Waste is the perfect way to do that, you know, because it just, like, folds over the stomach. But then also because it it's not only Empire Waste, but it has, like, the opening down the front and, like, the underdress underneath it. She's, like, that way, like, as she's, like growing, 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 it can just kind of, like, fall away and, like, accommodate, like, her pregnancy better. Yeah. And I love the stripes on that dress, too, which kind of, as she gets bigger, the stripes on the dress just so perfectly just show the length of time that's happened in her pregnancy, even though it's only been, like, five minutes. It just... Yeah. The dress just so perfectly shows you how pregnant she is toward the end. It really is. And I love... Because, like, at the, at the beginning, like that separation in the front it's totally closed like she like barely looks pregnant but by the end it's just like you see the underdress like it is time she gives birth to tommy and billy (laughs) tommy and billy such typical sitcom names um another costume that i love so much from this episode was actually on tayana paris's costume who plays geraldine and monica rambo oh my gosh. The fish pants. We have to talk about the fish pants. I think like that we do. Okay, so this this look of hers here is probably my favorite of the entire series. Wow. On just her or of the entire series? Of the entire series. <laughs> of everything. I love this. Because A, it's just very flattering to her body type. Like, it looks so good on her. The colors are perfect for her. And, like, it's just so 70s. Like, it's so 70s. The sheer puffy sleeves, the, like, vest, the, like, long over vest, like, the flare, like, bell-bottom pants. And then when that stork (laughs) tries to eat (laughs) the fish off her pants, I, like... I don't know if there's ever been a better use of yeah, costume. I mean, this is essential storytelling through costume design. It was perfect. I need those pants. I need them. I want them. I'm going to get them. I know. Do you think Do you think anybody will, like, make them? I'll make them. I think part of, like, our The Art of Costume Blogcast merch store, we should just sell fish pants in, like, pajama form so everyone could wear <laughs> fish pants. I don't know. We're going to... We're gonna visit okay. this. Yeah, in in ten in ten years when we finally have a sponsorship and maybe we can get Marvel <laughs> hey. on board with that. <laughs> have some faith. <laughs> um, another costume I have to mention before we go to break is Agnes's costume because once again she's being the nosy neighbor and she's just wearing a very muted kind of dark sweater and it still just shows like something is up about this lady. She's wearing her medallion, which I'm going to bring up later. Mm -hmm. But 
like even that scene where she gives like the very obvious wink to camera. Yeah. It's just like she's so clearly evil and her dark sweater, which I love, just says everything about her character when she's standing outside. <sighs> she's so clearly evil. And I do like how they use accessories in this because, you know, like at the end, some of Monica's actual actual memories break through Wanda's hold on her. And, you know, Wanda kicks her out of uh, Westview, but she sees, like, her necklace, which is the sword symbol. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, it's so perfectly incorporated and 70s looking that you don't notice it at first. Yeah, it's like they left little tiny notes throughout the entire TV series trying to tell us, like, when things were not as they seemed. But it just feels so real that you just, you almost get lost in it because it feels so real and you're not noticing, like, they're like screaming, hey, this woman is a witch. She's wearing a medallion that literally has yeah. two witches being burned at a stake. Or Geraldine's wearing a sword necklace that so clearly says sword on it, but you can't see it. No. <laughs> well, Wanda has now given birth to two children, so... Uh, I think we should take a break, and by the time we come back from break, she'll probably have about three or four more kids. So she, well, she needs a break. We need a break. <laughs> Everyone needs a break. <laughs> we'll see you guys after the break. <laughs> time for episode four we interrupt this program i thought that was a great title for this so at the end of episode three geraldine aka monica gets kicked out of westfield and you just see like a swarm of shield vehicles come to pick her up so episode four it's monica's backstory we get thrown back like i don't know how many months to when the snap was reversed and Monica is like rematerializing into this world at a hospital. She's freaking out because her mom who just had surgery is missing. She's like, what's going on? A doctor comes up and is like, oh, I know you. Your mom's dead. You've been gone for five years. And she's like, what? She's like, yeah. So (laughs) she's upset, but she's like, okay, let's get back to work. We, we meet director Hayward, jackass, <laughs> and he's like, so glad you're back. They're clearly old friends. Her mom founded S.W.O.R.D. and put in a protocol in case, you know, the vanished people ever came back. And he's like, yeah, because of that, like, you can't go back into space. You're grounded. But hey... I have this joint task with the FBI. They, like, want to borrow a drone. Go take it to Agent Jimmy Woo. And we meet Jimmy Woo. He's outside Westview, New Jersey. And he's like, yeah, I have a missing witness in witness protection. Uh, Nobody can remember him. And these two cops right here say that Westview doesn't even exist. But um, I see it. Apparently you see it. Don't know what's going on. And she's like, that's really weird. She's like, well, just go into the town. He's like, ooh, we can't. Doesn't want us going in there. And she's like, what do you mean? Goes up, touches the barrier, gets sucked in to Westview. And everyone freaks out. S.W.O.R.D. creates a whole new task force. They set up camp outside Westview. And Spencer, who do they bring in? But Darcy from Thor. She's an astrophysicist (laughs) now. And I was so happy they brought her back because she's just like, she finds the broadcast feed while Hayward is stupidly sending in uh, someone to like (laughs) walk, like crawl through the sewage. He pops back up the other side as the beekeeper. That's where the beekeeper came from. And they're just like going through identifying everyone in Westview And it brings us, the episode brings us right back to up to when Monica got thrown out of Westview. (laughs) You said it perfectly. This was such a fun episode because it's the first time it really takes you out of Wanda's 
fictional reality that she's created for herself. Mm -hmm. Fictional reality. That's kind of a weird saying. Yeah. Um, But I love how these Marvel shows are bringing back, like, our favorite characters. Darcy Lewis, played by Kat Dennings. I love seeing Agent Wu, played by Randall Park, who is, of course, in the Ant-Man movies. I he's he's a great actor. I love him. Yes, I also love him and Veep. But I loved the costumes that they did for Monica Rambo, not just in this episode, but all the episodes. Yeah. This episode's very just kind of straightforward. They're wearing just their their sword costumes. Well, mm-hmm. their sword uniforms, I should say. Just the sword necklace over the shoulder. FBI costumes. So it's kind of interesting to see Maya's create costumes for this fictional reality, as I said, but also for the real world. Yeah. And I, I love Monica's shield uniform before she gets sucked into Westview. Because, you know, in the one episode we see her in color, she's all in blue. And her shield uniform is all blue. That's true. That's true. It's like when you're in Westview, you're representative of your usual self, just... A little bit different. A little bit weirded up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So there's not a lot of costumes to talk about in this episode. It's a great episode. Yeah. Brings in the horror elements like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Just the the mystery surrounding Westview. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, because, like... You go three episodes and watching it week to week, like I thought the those episodes were there I thought there was a lot more before we got to find out like what was happening outside of Westview. But it's nice because like it very quickly brings you up to speed with everything that was going on while Wanda's in this sitcom fantasy world. Yeah, it's nice to be pulled out for a second. But we're qu- we're quickly sucked back in in episode five. On a, it's called On a Very Special Episode, which I love all these episode titles. They're all very sitcom. Something is terribly wrong in Westview. This episode pays homage to sitcoms of the 1980s and 1990s, such as Family Ties, Growing Pains, Roseanne, and Full House. It also introduces Wanda's brother, Pietro, who was po- uh, previously portrayed in the MCU by Aaron Tyler Johnson, but this Pietro is actually played by a different version, yeah. played by Evan Peters, who we actually know from the X-Men film series. So just the casting in this episode is just mysterious. I know. I I love the Quicksilver from X-Men. Evan Peters is here. It feels like they kind of write him off at the end of the series, but I'm like really hoping for like now that Disney owns Fox. I'm really hoping they tie him in as the actual Quicksilver just from the X-Men universe. Like, somehow Agatha, like, pulled him over and then gave him this, like, fake memory and identity. Oh, yeah. Uh, Definitely the X-Men is coming. I'm pretty sure Michaela Cole, she was just casted for the new Black Panther, the second one. And I'm very positive she's going to play Storm, but of course we're not going to know until it happens. I actually have not seen the X-Men, though, where Peter Evans <laughs> plays Quicksilver. I'm sorry. I'm never going to live that down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't watched the new X-Men since since Gandalf stopped playing Magneto. Like, let's just be real. I, I'm I just, very disappointed in you. I wish you could all see the face that Elizabeth just gave me. It really gave me chills for a second. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to remedy it, but we will. But um, Wanda and Vision have a problem of their own to remedy. They can't get these babies to sleep. No. Wanda, oh my gosh. Wanda looks so tired. They're going through growing pains, honestly. Those babies yeah. are getting bigger and bigger by the second. They're feeling their tired body change. <laughs> Um, I love this 80s wardrobe. It is yes. just, you know, the 80s are my favorite era, and this is just everything I needed. And it starts, like, super, super 80s, where she's got her her turtleneck sweater on with a vest and just, like, the baggy pants. And she just looks, like, so overwhelmed. <laughs> my favorite costume has to be Agnes's 80s aerobics costume oh. with the pink tights. 
and the leg warmers and the headband. It's just oh, and she starts so rocking the cradles while doing lunges. <laughs> it's just so Catherine Hahn. I mean, she was nominated for an Emmy for this role, and damn it, she better win that Emmy because she kills it in this show. I know. She really does. Uh, But also, Wanda's next look also kills it, because before you know it, those little boys are like toddlers. And she's like, well, I guess I gotta put something else on. And she has like just the cutest short sleeve plaid shirt. I need these jeans <laughs> and overalls. <laughs> or not overalls, suspenders. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. It's so 80s, but not super recognizable 80s, and I love it. No, so this episode is, you know, inspired by all these 80s sitcoms, and one of them is Roseanne. <gasps> and I used to watch Roseanne all the time. Yeah. You know, she's a little bit problematic, but the original 80s show was brilliant. And when I saw this plaid shirt on Wanda, I was just like, that screams Roseanne to me. Yes, it does. It really does. Uh, can we talk about Evan Peters showing up in this like tropical Hawaiian shirt? Looks like he just showed up from a trip to Miami. With a black motorcycle jacket over it? <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Like, excuse me. <laughs> Who do you think you are? What, you can't give a long-lost brother a squeeze? (laughs) (laughs) Like, Spencer. Uh, Of course that landed with Elizabeth. (laughs) When when I first saw this, I screamed. I was with my entire family, and I screamed. And it was funny, because my brother was waiting for it. (laughs) Because he knows how much I like the the newer X-Men movies. I was so excited. It was so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Like, you know that they casted him just to, like, throw us all in, like, the weirdest loop. Like, what yeah. the hell is going on here? Because, I mean, I haven't seen his X-Men movies, but I still know he's an X-Men. And I know, you know, who Quicksilver is in the comics and in Age of Ultron. So when Evan Peters showed up, I was like, all right, that's it. I'm confused i no longer know what's going on here okay finer things club when we need to take a break from harry potter it's the new (laughs) (laughs) x-men oh my gosh we should let everyone know what our finer things club is since we're here oh yeah so i think we've probably mentioned it a couple times now but every sunday us and some friends we have a movie club called finer things club based on the esteemed the office Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. minor things club (laughs) and we watch through various movie series we watch them over zoom too because we're from all over the country so it's how we stay connected it's fun and i recommend you do that with your best friends who you don't live nearby so you can stay connected and watch movies with so that kind of wraps up the 80s episode uh things are just going really weird though vision's noticing some weird stuff is happening People are saying weird things to him. The horror elements are just, like, so subtle in this episode. It's just so brilliant. Well, this is the episode where his he, like, unmind controls his co-worker, and his co-worker, like, freaks out. Yeah, which was so scary to watch. Just the obvious, like, immense amount of pain everyone in this town is going through. Living through Wanda's nightmares and all of her trauma and pain. But you can't tell because they have to smile through it. That's just such a relatable note that I feel like all of us could relate to, just like smiling through the pain and trauma and anxieties. I think that's really what a big part of what the show is really saying and showing for us. Yeah. Ugh. Definitely. That concludes episode five. Please take me to my favorite episode, please. I'm going to take you to your favorite episode, episode six. All new Halloween spooktacular. So good. I love this episode. It's so good. It's so good. So the boys aged up again in order to get a dog in the previous episode, which ended up dying. Side note. (laughs) Those little bastards. (laughs) Those little bastards. So they're like 10 now. And we're in episode six. It's very like Malcolm in the middle, boy meets world. Billy's, like, narrating a lot of the episode, but, like, the house is in chaos, because it's Evan Peters 
Pietro character. So he's like insane. Billy literally calls him a man child. <laughs> so he's <laughs> so he's like getting the kids into all sorts of trouble. Wanda and Vision are clearly they're like having problems that children notice. And Vision's just like, I got to go help with the neighborhood watch. And Pietro, he's like, no problem. The boys need need a male character here for them. That's what I'm here for. And he's just making it very obvious to Wanda that, like, oh, yeah, you're in control of everything. More people are coming to her being like, oh, is everything how you like it? Like, we can change things if you want. But she's like, no, no, like, Halloween's great. Everyone just keep going. But she's, like, a little confused. And Pietro's just, like, pointing out some very, like, obvious problems. He's like, where'd your accent go? Like, what's going on? And she's Where did all these kids show up from? (laughs) Where did all these kids show up from? She's suspicious of him because he can't he doesn't look like her brother. He doesn't seem to have the same memories. So it's just a whole lot of confusion. Vision, he's off on in like the outskirts of Westview where horrifyingly everything is going in slow motion. People are like repeating actions and he runs into Agatha just like frozen in her car. So he like mind wipes her so the true Agatha can come through and she's like freaking out. She's like, we need someone to save us. And he's like, okay, don't worry. I got it. So he like re mind controls her so she can just go along and be happy, whatever, till he figures everything out. So he's like, okay, I got to get to the edge of Westfield. While this is going on, Sword is in overdrive now that Monica's come come out and like she's told them everything that's going on. And Hayward takes this as like, oh, so Wanda's a terrorist. Uh, she tried to steal. She stole Vision's body and like we need to take her out. Monica's like, no, no, no. She's like grieving. We need to stop her. But like she's not a terrorist. No need to murder her. And he's like, um, yes, need to worry her. So he tries to get Monica, Darcy, Agent Wu thrown out, but they're like, uh, we got our own plan. Thank you very much. But that's kind of the least of their problems, because Vision decides to take a little trip through the barrier and subsequently disintegrates, forcing Wanda to expand the borders of Westview to save him, while also creating a carnival out of the sword agent's (laughs) <laughs> she pulls into the into Westview. Uh, yeah, I love the carnival slash circus scene because I was like, oh my god, a costume designer now has to create costumes for an entire yeah. carnival. <laughs> uh, and not just like any carnival, like a 1990s slash 2000s inspired carnival too. So it's like a period carnival. Yeah, it, uh. it's hilarious. Um but what uh, the great part of this is that Wanda and Vision and Pietro's costumes are all ripped like straight from the comic books. Yes. And that was actually um Kevin Fe- Feige's idea was to go back to to the comic books and use those as their Halloween costumes. Yeah, you know, when I met with Maya's weeks ago, months ago now, in our interview, she would basically said they showed her pictures of Wanda and Vision and Pietro's costumes from the comic books. They basically showed them the exact picture and said, you're making this. And Maya's was just kind of like, uh, okay. And she basically told us, though, she thought like, oh, they're like kind of cheesy, but, you know, she's going to do it. And a day where they like were actually filming and... Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany were walking around in their costumes from the comic books. Everyone was just amazed because it was just so obviously from the comic books. It was everyone's favorite costume, supposedly. It was just the day on set. Everyone was just amazed. And so was I. I mean, I love Scarlet Witch's costume from the comic books. And I love the crown so much. So when I saw it, come to life in this episode. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big comic book nerd, so I was almost in tears. It was so exciting. It was so good. And they all lend themselves really well to being like very 
very easy to like home make at home like use like disparate like whatever you have around your house to make them i feel like they lend themselves very well to that so they look very like homemade and like oh look at us yeah they feel very homemade except i will say that wanda's crown though suspiciously does not Mm -hmm. look homemade it looks like like she was not going to let herself walk around in a tacky crown though she gave herself a nice polished like 3d printed looking crown (laughs) <laughs> so she's wearing this like red bodysuit with these light pink tights her polished crown and the red cape which i just thought this is so perfect we're gonna see this at halloween time this mm-hmm. year everywhere vision is wearing like a green bodysuit with like yellow track shorts over it so clearly she does not give vision the same amount of polishness she no. gave her crown and He's wearing, like, this yellow cape, and that bodysuit just so barely covers his head. It's just so perfect. So perfect. And, like, I love how Tommy, because Tommy in this episode ends up getting super speed, but he also decides to dress just like his uncle, who is in the original um, Quicksilver costume. (laughs) I love that sweater so much, but I think that just the best touch of Quicksilver's costume is the hair. I mean, that is so... The comic book hair, it just was perfect. it really was. (laughs) I'm looking at the comic book right now, and it just makes me so happy. It's it's a spitting image. It's exactly seen on the comic book. It really is. I also feel like this episode had... We talked about how heavily inspired it was from Malcolm in the Middle, which I totally see that. Side note, I used to love Malcolm in the Middle. I had the DVD box set, and I used to love watching it, but also hate watching it in bed at the same time, because the title credits, (laughs) it would just play the theme song over and over and over, and it keep me up at night. I did love how on the nose Agatha's witch costume was. Me too. It's so, once again, it's so obvious. Like, Agatha's just like, I'm a witch, and no one here is smart enough to see that. (laughs) It was great. But, um, the good times can't last, can they, Spencer? Never. I mean, this place is very quickly falling apart. Literally. I mean, Vision's actually falling apart. Yes. (laughs) We will discuss that when we come back from our break. Oh, can't wait. Messing up everything. It's been Agatha all along. (laughs) I love (laughs) this episode. Season 7. I mean, episode 7. Breaking the Fourth Wall, which is a perfect episode title because we all know the 2000s is all about breaking the fourth wall. Modern Family. This episode is very heavily inspired by Modern Family. I also kind of see an Office influence. I haven't read anything that says, oh, we were influenced by The Office. But the opening credits, to me, so much scream The Office. It just feels very obvious to me. They just don't want to they say They do. It. <laughs> um, this episode, Wanda's really kind of reeling from the events of Halloween. She's exhausted. She realizes now that she's causing a lot of pain for people. But at the same time... She knows if she lets go of this world, she's letting go of this family that she loves. She felt like she was reconnecting with her brother, kind of. I mean, she does kind of launch him into a giant bale of hay. Um, But Vision almost died just trying to escape this place. So she knows that things are quickly unraveling. And I feel like we can all relate to this episode a lot because Wanda just wants to spend a day in bed in her plaid t-shirt, just eating cereal and hoping the day just ends pretty quickly here. So we kind of open on this scene and it's very modern family. She's doing like a little interview with the whoever's behind the camera. Um, So this episode really kind of starts with this look at the circus that we talked about in the last segment. 
Darcy, who is now in this world, is a escape artist chained to a vehicle, and Vision's like... I feel like it really doesn't play to my strengths. <laughs> yeah. Vision's like, uh, do you remember me? And Darcy's like, who are you? And she breaks off her chains because she's a escape artist. Vision brings her back to this reality. Darcy kind of starts to explain everything to Vision. Literally, she basically sits down and explains to him the Marvel Universe. She's like, and then in Infinity War, we were in Wakanda, and you were battling Thanos. Uh, Wanda killed you. He brought you back. You tried again. Then Thanos killed you. It was kind of a sucky day. Um, So she explains everything to him. In the meantime, we're just living through this really wonderful circus set. So cool. I love that the costume designer got to do this. Darcy's outfit, it's very cool because it has like lots of hints of blue, but also that red in it, which also screams very mm-hmm. Darcy to me with like the red. Kat Dennings to me, just she has like a very red aura to me. So I love yeah. just the red accent in that circus suit. Yeah. I love the kind of, like, marching band aspect to it as well. Yeah. (laughs) It's very funny. And I love that she spends, like, the rest of the show in this outfit. Yeah. (laughs) Like, this is your battle uniform, is this marching band suit. Um, At the same time, Monica Rambeau is trying to get into Westview. They think what they have is a very cool armored vehicle that's going to smash through. Instead, they basically slam head on into the shield and flips over. Um, so Monica smashes her way, though, through the hex and she becomes kind of, I don't know how to describe it. She's just like one with she the gets hex. She superpowers. Basically, that's, I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, which Monica Rambeau is a character from the comics. And of course, we know her mom from Captain Marvel. So this is kind of the Monica Rambeau origin story at the same time. I love her sword costumes. I love like this blue and gray suit that she's in because it's also kind of relevant to her comic book costume at the same time. So it's very it's a very modern look at her comic book costume. But also that astronaut, I should say ast- I shouldn't say astronaut cuz she's not in space, but that's what it looks like. That's a very awesome costume. Yeah, it is awesome. But um, while Wanda's like having her little mental break, Agnes comes over and is like, you know what? Let me take the boys off your hand. Like, give you some space. And she's wearing that great purple sweater. Oh, uh, I love it so much because once again, it's very like, <laughs> like she's wearing this very dark color, but with a hint of purple to me, it's just like, it's almost like she wants someone to discover her. She's like, hello, does anyone not know that I'm a witch from the time of Salem? Is anyone going to call me on this? No? Okay. No one's going to call her on it. But, you know, as Wanda's working through things, she eventually kind of has to get out of the house. Makes her way to Agnes's house to kind of, you know, check on the boys. But Agnes is being a little shifty. She's being a little weird. And she has the kids basically playing in the basement at one point. And as Wanda has her little incident with Monica, Monica's trying to tell her everything is falling apart right now. And Wanda doesn't want to hear it. I love the costume that Wanda's wearing, this, like, red sweatshirt hoodie. We all have, like, this costume at home. We wear, after a long day at work, you put on your hoodie and you just don't want to do it for the world. And you're just on the couch watching TV all the time. Yes. I mean, this is this was our quarantine costume, is what Wanda's wearing right now. This was the COVID-19 outfit. Yeah. <laughs> but she, once again, she's, bla- like, pretty much just, like, blasted her away again, kind of. And is chilling at Agatha's house now. Yeah. Uh, she's basically like, where are the boys? And Agatha's like, oh, they're probably playing in the basement. And this leads Wanda downstairs to Agatha's very creepy basement. And this is when we finally, probably to Agatha's relief, she's so excited to finally reveal that she is not Agnes. She is Agatha Harkness, the very, very powerful witch from 1693 Salem, who sensed this powerful magic in Westview and is here to... uh, borrow permanently Wanda's powers. 
Yes. And Wanda comes down the stairs, enters her, like, inner sanctum, and she's just standing there petting her rabbit. She's like, (laughs) nice to meet ya, and it launches into Agatha all along. Oh, God. Which is just... It's the perfect, like, what, three-minute backstory to everything she's been up to. It's so good. (laughs) Everything evil has had to do with Agatha all along. Everything, and... And I killed Sparky, too! (laughs) (laughs) I was like, why did you kill the dog? And that felt a little over the top for me. <laughs> that was just so good. I know we're not supposed to like Agatha, but I can't help it. She's like my favorite I like character. Agatha. She's the best. She's she's great. While watching this in preparation for the podcast today, I ordered my Agatha Harkness Funko Pop on the couch. <laughs> I, I was just like, I thought you were done with Funko Pop. Hmm, Spencer. No. Well, Agatha, it was Agatha all along. I mean, I couldn't help it. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh, So why don't you bring us into the next episode? So Agatha reveals that not only is she a witch, Wanda is a witch. And she's like, oh, you have magic. And Wanda's like, "Mm, no, I don't. This is like, I was an experiment. That's how I got my powers. And Agatha's like, oh, yeah, let me take you down memory lane. (laughs) <laughs> and she shows her all the in- instances where, like, she used her her magic. Uh, we get to see where her affinity for sitcoms came from when she was a child in Sokovia, watching them with her family. And Agatha pretty much figures out that, okay, she always had magic, but it was the Hydra experiments that kind of, like, brought it out of her. So... She's like, "Mm, okay, great. Um, could I have this? And Wanda's like, no, I want my whole, I I want my life. I like my life. But Agatha's just like, no, and I have your voice captured and uh, you're going to give me your powers. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially the entire episode. It's just this evil lockdown memory lane. I love this episode. One, because I'm obsessed with witches. I love Salem. I've been there. It was one of my favorite trips I've ever done. So I loved how Maya's Rubio created these very cool costumes for the Salem witches. Yeah. But my favorite part about it was the medallion that Agatha rips from her mother. Um, So this is a cool Easter egg, because if you actually notice... Agatha wears this medallion in almost every episode on every costume, yeah. except for the aerobics costume, of course, because that just wouldn't fit. Um, but on that medallion, you can't really see the detail, but there's two witches literally being burned at the stake. So, like, this is, like, Agatha's way of just kind of... It's her signature style that we don't really notice throughout the entire show. But on your next r- walk, uh, next watch through, you'll notice that she wears this medallion in every costume. It's super cool. And like, I love seeing like Wanda at all different stages, especially when she's in like the Hydra like experiment. I was like, they did volunteer for this. You couldn't have like treated them a little bit better, like gave her some clean clothes every now and then. I mean, are we surprised? It's Hydra. I mean, no, no, we're not surprised. <laughs> they're still Nazis. <laughs> they are still Nazis. <laughs> no, I love at the end of this episode because again, like, it's nothing super special. Oh, and we find out like Wanda like did not. This is the episode where we see Wanda did not steal Vision's body, and that he had willed her that piece of land in Westfield. Um, but I love at the end when she like has. <laughs> Billy and Tommy held hostage and she all of a sudden just has this crazy like witch costume on. <laughs> uh, that is my favorite costume. And I think that is the best way to take us into the series finale where we really get to see it up close. In the series finale, uh, Agatha Harkness is attempting to take Wanda's chaos magic. Um, but a whole bunch of things start happening. She's interrupted by the white vision, which 
Director Hayward has been secretly making somewhere in Sword headquarters out of out of Vision's old body parts. <laughs> yeah, so the Visions are fighting. And Wanda is being forced to fight Agatha, and let's just talk about Agatha's costume for a second. This is, I think, one of my... F- I don't know, it's between this costume and Wanda's Halloween costume that are my favorites. I love this one because the textiles in Agatha's costume are so beautiful. Yes. The colors are just right. Um, I know Maya's Rubio said that these specialty costumes in this last episode were the more difficult ones to make. Um, Agatha's fabrics are kind of like a vintage fabric, um, but it's supposed to show a lot of depth and movement, kind of like Medusa is what she said, because of the way that Agatha floats and just that fabric yeah. just kind of floats in the wind. It's so beautiful. Because I love, it's got to be like a silk, like chiffon, like overcoat, like cape thing, over cape that she's got going on. And it's just, like, all the tiny little pleats and how those, like, flare out around her. It's so good. She's just so gracefully, like, floats around in the wind like a ghost or something. It's just so cool. I love that costume so much. So they're fighting. Vision is fighting. Were, what, did you love the white Vision? Or were you terrified? I was kind of ter- I was a little terrified. I'll be <laughs> honest. I was a little terrified. Because I was just like, this isn't Vision. This, What is this, like, like soulless thing flying around? <laughs> I love how Agatha said, oh, this is awkward. Your ex-boyfriend is here with your new boyfriend at the same party. And I was like, uh, yeah, this is kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but and it's adorable. Like, the whole family's come back together and, like... Wanda's fighting, the boys want to fight, but they send them inside, and then Vision's like, okay, I got other Vision, you got the witch. Yes. We got this. I love the shot of the family together. Um, It just sucks that Wanda has to fight in, like, her red hoodie that she was basically sleeping in. I know. Um, Obviously, that'll change, but we'll get there. We'll get there. And we find out that Monica, at the end of the last episode... (laughs) Was uh, captured by Pietro, a.k.a. <laughs> Agatha's, well, unquote, husband, <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> so, Ralph is just like, he's just a bewitched actor. That's what he is. And he has this great, like, sun yeah. tie-dye t-shirt on. Uh, he's just this lazy guy that lives next door wearing his beanie. Like, I know this guy. I went to high school with this guy. Yeah. Everybody went to high school with a guy like this. (laughs) With Ralph. Um, His name is not just Ralph. Ralph. It's actually Ralph Boner, Elizabeth. (laughs) (laughs) I I know that you just tried to sneakily left that out, but it has to be said. (laughs) That's amazing, though. (sighs) Ralph Boner. Um, I thought maybe it'd be Ralph Boehner. You know, like John Boehner, but no, nope. clearly, Monica says, nope. have a great day, Ralph Boner. <laughs> breaks, breaks the curse on him, which I loved. And then we never see him again. <laughs> I know, right? It's just like Evan Peters just disappears. We'll never know. But it was just a really crazy casting meant to throw us through a loop. So Wanda and Agatha are still fighting Elizabeth, but then this is the moment we're all waiting for. In a huge clash of powers, they're both battling. They go back in time to Salem for a little bit. Wanda's fighting off the witches. And I just love how beautiful the scene is with like the red clouds over Westview. And she's just launching her magic every which direction. Agatha has that beautiful purple. The colors in this scene are just so beautiful. Um, But at one point, I was like, damn, Wanda's really missing with these shots. Like, she's she's not afraid to throw her shot, you know? And But then we come to know that this is all on purpose. Because she was setting up runes all around Westview, just like Agatha taught her. To make it her Yes, dominion. just like Agatha taught her in the last episode. And Wanda uses this chance 
to just absorb the powers of Agatha and this slowly finally become who she was truly meant to be, the Scarlet Witch. Yes. I realize at this moment that we've never really heard the term the Scarlet Witch in any Marvel film no. or show up until this point. And I just thought that was brilliant. She's always been Wanda Maximoff. Yeah. Uh, so we have to talk about Wanda's final Scarlet Witch look. Oh my gosh. It's just so cool. It's so cool. It's Especially after seeing the Halloween costume, you know, like the very retro idea of this actual costume. This is the modern yeah. Maya's Rubio take on the Scarlet Witch costume. It's so cool. It Exactly. And I love it because, you know, she talks about, you know, you have to, like, build off the previous movies, but, like, make it better, make it your own. And I love how she she takes that jacket she's been wearing, and it really does look like... A uh, red leather jacket she's been wearing through all of these movies just like fused to her body. <laughs> yeah. To create this. Yeah, it just works so perfectly. I love everything about it. I love like the 3D printed looks of it. It looks pretty comfortable actually, but I mean, I don't know Elizabeth Olsen very well, so I'm sure I'll ask her at some point. Uh, I love the crown. I do wish it was a little bit bigger, like her Halloween costume. But I get why it's not bigger, because it feels yeah. realistic this way. Like, a big crown is costumey, so this feels very I wish, realistic. I wish maybe it had been a little bit wider, like, went over her yeah. hair a little bit more. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I understand that, for sure. I just don't know how that's staying on her face. <laughs> magic, probably. <laughs> yeah, magic. I mean, she's the Scarlet Witch now. She could do whatever she wants. I mean, that's very true. Once she becomes the Scarlet Witch, things are over. Agatha pretty quickly loses. And in the best way to defeat Agatha, the Scarlet Witch takes her power. And she basically says, as your punishment, you are going to remain the nosy neighbor, Agnes. You're going to live here and you're going to play your character. Yeah. And Agatha's like, no, please don't. And I love this because this gives me hope that maybe we'll see Agnes in future movies somehow. Oh, I think Wanda's going to need her help. <laughs> right? That'd be so cool. Uh, the Visions and their battle, once uh, fake Vision has a conversation with real but dead Vision, gives him all of his memories back, and White Vision's like, I got a blast takes off, which also gives me hope because that means that Paul <laughs> Bettany is not done playing Vision either. I know. I, I was really worried like this was his final, but it's not. <laughs> I love how White Vision's just like, I gotta go figure some things out. <laughs> yeah, I need to do some soul searching. Peace. He's out. Which I'm like, fine, get out here because I need you to come back in another movie. So if, yeah. if you gotta go, go. Uh, maybe he's gonna go get spray painted or something so he could... Look like the real Vision again. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he has all of his memories of the old Vision. He's just, like, doesn't have his color, but he's just, like, very pale, you know? Like you and I. We just, we need a new outfit to be the Vision Wanda wants us to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Director Hayward is getting thrown in prison thanks to Darcy and Jimmy Woo. Love that. And this really brings us to the end of the story, which was very, actually, pretty depressing. I almost cried. Almost? Yeah, I'm not a big crier. You know that. I cried. I'm not afraid to say. Um, Wanda puts her kids to bed, which gave me very Titanic vibes, where she's like, everything's going to be okay. Mommy's very proud. Oh Just don't look out the window behind you while you go night-night. <laughs> Don't look at the uh, rising water. Just fall asleep. <laughs> God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not Titanic. Oh my gosh, now I'm remembering those old people from Titanic. <laughs> no, in their bed. Oh my god. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. <laughs> Why did you bring up Titanic? <laughs> I could <couldn't> help it. <laughs> Jack could have fit on that door. No, we're not going to go there. <laughs> the people so are not now. listening for us to rehash Titanic right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wanda and Vision go downstairs. 
they have their last heart to heart, which is a very beautiful scene. I was crying. And Wanda has to let go of this world she's created because she's basically hurting other people in the process. But she also, is, I feel like, is at a point where she could kind of face all of her trauma head on. She has the tools. She's prepared. And the only way to do it is to stop bearing everything and just confront her trauma head on. And she's going to do it. And I'm proud of her. You go, girl. Yep. She finds herself a nice little cabin in the woods where she can just wear a lovely white, gray, relaxing outfit and let her uh, her mind self read through. Her astral projection. <laughs> all the witchy, her astral projection read through <laughs> all the witchy books. She looks like you and I doing our research before a podcast, just like flipping through a hundred like, articles. <laughs> This so that clearly is setting up the new Doctor Strange movie. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, the end of this paired with the end of Loki, I'm just like, uh, yeah. yeah, Doctor Strange I mean, Multiverse of Madness, absolutely. That movie is going to be it. We just know that's going to be one of the best Marvel movies of all time. There's no way it can't. And it's got my boy, Benedict Cumberpatch. <gasps> um... Yeah, you love Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> I love him too, but like, okay. not as much as you. I think he's great as Doctor Strange. His greatest role of all time, can you guess? Uh, Sherlock. No, it's Smog, the the dragon from The Hobbit. <laughs> oh, Hello? that's right. <laughs> Come on. I mean, he had to play a dragon, and he did it very well. He did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end with the last note. Um... The final little tidbit is Monica Rambeau goes to the theater and one of the agents reveals himself to be a scroll. And I'm so happy to see the scrolls again. This is also setting up Captain Marvel 2 at some point. And we all know that's going to be wonderful as well. And I just love how the costume, that white shirt the agent's wearing against the green scroll skin it just looks <laughs> it's so wonderful. I love the contrast of colors there. It it really does look good. It's it's so perfect. Oh, this was so good. It was so good. And that brings us to the end of WandaVision. Ah! I can't. It was so good. I wish this was getting a second season, but it's not. I know. So many people are like, why isn't there going to be a second season? But like... How could there be? It doesn't need a second season. It, it just wouldn't no. make sense. Yeah. They could make a another show about Wanda, but it couldn't be called WandaVision, though. It's not like she's going to no. move to Alaska and set up a new bubble and start over, you know? <laughs> it just yeah. doesn't make sense. Like, low-key, that whole situation was a massive accident that she just, like, didn't <laughs> yeah. quite know how to get out of. <laughs> She's the Scarlet Witch now. She's not going to make this kind of accident again. <laughs> no, she's not. But she, she is ready to go get her sons back. She is. Uh, Elizabeth, I had so much fun watching WandaVision. It's such a great show. The costumes by Maya's Rubio are just absolutely brilliant. I'm so glad we got to do this episode. Me too. Me too. So, Elizabeth, what are we going to be watching next week? Are you are you ready to take a little a little trip to the dark ages in England, a time shrouded in mystery? Are you ready to hear the tale from King Arthur's court of the Green Knight? Oh yeah, I'm so ready for this movie. It looks so cool. I I'm so love ready. the dark ages. Take me back. We've been really jumping all over. We went from legally blonde to the 1950s to 2000s and now we're going back to the dark ages i'm so excited for this i love arthurian myths and like the green knight is a very just like strange like side story of one of his knights and i just like confounded that someone decided to turn it into a movie <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait it's gonna be so fun it's coming out in theaters very soon so the 30th yeah, I can't wait to see it, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it next week. So thanks for listening. Thank you.
Uh, if you would like to share us with a friend or family member, get us out there in front of some more people, we would love that. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at the Art of Costume Pod. You can also find us at theartofcostume.com for more articles and deep dives. Uh, have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye. The Art of Costume Blogcast is hosted by Elizabeth Joy Glass and Spencer Williams. Produced by Elizabeth Joy Glass with associate producer Spencer Williams. Our sound design and engineering is done by Daniel White. Follow us on Instagram at The Art of Costume Pod. Or visit theartofcostumeblogcast.com for all blogcast updates. For more costume reviews, deep dives, and interviews, visit theartofcostume.com. A blog dedicated to highlighting the best in costume design. Thank you.